Hey, home bakers, it's Jack here, bakewithjack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And this week, in the true spirit of sourdough September, I'm gonna bring you seven sourdough myths busted. Roll it. Hey you guys and welcome back to the Bake With Jack YouTube channel where I share with you a little bit of my bread making expertise every single Thursday. If you're new and this sort of thing is what floats your boat, consider pressing subscribe before you go. This week and for the coming three further weeks, being four weeks in total, we're going to talk about sourdough bread because it's sourdough September and the real bread campaign for which I am an ambassador celebrates sourdough for a whole week. No wait, for a whole month of sourdough September, raising awareness of the wonderful thing that is sourdough and exposing some terrible truths about what sourdough is not. We're gonna cover that in the coming video, but for now, I'll leave the link underneath for the Real Bread campaign. If you wanna find out more information about that, and if you wanna join, you can do it there. Now, there are plenty of things that will put us off making sourdough at home for the first time. Even I didn't make sourdough at home for a long time because something I'd heard, something I'd picked up along the way, some little complication involved in the process, which just turned out to be simply not true. So here on the Bake With Jack YouTube channel in the first part of this four part sourdough September series, whoo, we're gonna be busting sourdough myths left, right and center to make life a little bit more easier. For you. Here are the top seven sourdough myths busted. You don't have to do this, okay? You do not have to feed your starter every day. That is a myth. You don't have to book it into a sourdough starter hotel so they can keep on top of your detailed sourdough maintenance regime while you're away on holiday sunning yourself. Feeding your starter every single day is a complete myth and here is where I think it comes from. Here's a theory for you. When you're making sourdough, consider your source. Consider where the recipe came from. I feel like a lot of recipes come down from professional bakers. After all, where else would you go to find the proper way? But the thing is, a baker bakes every single day, and so they feed their starter every single day to keep it at a constant level of excitement for them to be able to produce the same loaf consistency day in day out if we scale that recipe down for us to use at home in our ovens as home bakers for one or maybe two loaves that means that now we've got a complicated daily sourdough maintenance schedule that we need to stick to in order for us to achieve the same consistency as a baker does in a baker's shop which we didn't even need to do in the first place we are not baking every single day. We're not professional bakers baking at scale. We have a different priority, a different agenda to a professional baker, namely prioritizing life over loaf, which is a huge subject that I can't wait to talk about in a future video. It's fascinating the baker prioritizes loaf over life because the life is the loaf and consistency is the be all and end all of the business. If a customer comes in and gets exactly the same loaf that they love every single time, that's how the bakery will win, but we don't function in that way at home. The need, the requirement to feed your starter every single day as a home baker is a huge responsibility, one that I'm not even prepared to take on. It's unnecessary, it's a complete myth, which leads us nicely into myth number two. This is the one that put me off making sourdough for a long time, the constant need to throw stuff into the bin all the time. Either that or taking on the responsibility of reducing waste by constantly creating sourdough crumpets or sourdough pancakes or sourdough waffles in order to use up all of that waste on top of making a sourdough loaf in the first place. <laughs> that thought of all that extra work or constantly throwing stuff in the bin was enough to put me off making sourdough for years. If you are feeding your sourdough starter every day, which we've already determined is myth number one, and you're not baking bread every single day, you're gonna be left with sourdough discard to deal with, and the fact that that is even a term is a completely mind-boggling. Don't feed every day, don't throw stuff away, and don't feel pressured into being a good human being by using up all that discard in other various things you ain't got time to make in the first place. 
The sourdough scrapings technique is a method that I use to make all of my sourdough bread at home and it's the foundation of my sourdough courses that I host. It's a method built from the ground up for practicality and for zero waste. If you haven't heard about it yet or you haven't seen the video that I did or if you want a refresher, I'll leave the link here somewhere. You can go and watch that one after. I heard this one and I thought, what on earth is that about? We've already determined you don't need to feed every day. We've already determined that you don't need to throw anything away. And so there's no need to use cheap flour for your start. And in actual fact, it's probably more important to use the opposite. Quality flour for your starter is a game changer and it is in fact for your whole sourdough bread. It's only three things, flour, water and salt. So hey, Let's get the flour right, because that's pretty much what you're eating at the end of the day. Organic flour is a big plus. Remember, we're looking after natural bacteria, cultures, and natural yeast environments here. And so it's important, I feel, to use something that hasn't been out in the field sprayed with pesticides that's designed to specifically kill all that stuff. All that good stuff is what we need. So let's shell out a little bit extra cash on the organic flowers that haven't been sprayed with all that stuff. I'm not a flower snob by any means, but it just stuff like this just makes sense to me. We want to look after that stuff. We don't want to kill it off. We want to look after it. We're eating quality bread made out of three ingredients. Let's make those three ingredients quality. And let's move on to myth number four. This one might be a little bit controversial and please let me know in the comments if you have experienced the death the sudden loss, your sourdough starter, the unrevivable mess in the bottom of a jar that you can do zero with, because I'm yet to have seen it. I don't believe the sourdough starters die. I feel like there's a few scenarios in which it might not show you as much activity as you are expecting, but that's for different reasons, not because your starter has sadly passed away. Your starter relies on having food in order to create gas, which makes it rise and makes it bubble up. I'm talking about puff. Your dough puffing up means that your starter's got to puff up and in order to puff up, it needs food to create the gas. Is any of this making sense? I hope so. And so you feed your starter and the natural yeasts feast on that new food, that new flour coming in with water is the food for your yeast and so it feeds on it it multiplies we've spoken about this before and it creates the gas and puffs up your starter letting you know that it's ready for your dough your dough now is new food because it's flour and water all over again it's new food and your yeast will snack on that new food creating gas and puff up your dough and then you bake it and it's lovely and you eat it your starter might not be making bubbles and that could be for two reasons one reason is that you just got too much of it and so your little feed for the giant colony of yeast inside is just not enough to get it excited link below for the video that i did on that and another reason why it might not be showing signs of activity is that it's already past it some people send me emails saying man my starter's just collapsed uh, should I throw it away? It's not going to be in a constant state of excitement all the time. If the yeasts inside have eaten all the food, then there's going to be no more food left to eat. And then so it can't continuously create gas. When you feed your starter and it's down here, it starts eating and then it starts puffing up. And when it runs out of food, it will sink again. The whole process is a loop. That's what happens. Feed eat, 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 run out of food. That does not mean that your starter is dead. It doesn't mean that it's game over for your bread. It just means that it's run out of food. There's loads of active yeasts inside of that starter that will probably puff up your bread dough. Anyway, it's just past the peak point, which is actually probably okay. And it's the same if you keep a mass of starter in your fridge for ages, 
for like a week. At the end of the week, it's gonna have the water floating on top, it's gonna to have no excitement activity going on the side, and you're gonna to wanna to think it's probably dead, but it's already just past that peak and it's come down, and it's just sleeping now. The best thing to do is to take most of it out and get rid of it, and whatever you wanna do, and then with that little bit left, you give that a big feed and it puffs up, ready to go next time. That is the foundation of the scrapings technique. If you do that every single time, there'll be no waste, no nothing, no fear of dead starters, and when I put that video out, some people commented in the comment box saying they had a starter in the fridge for a year, took it back to the scrapings, fed it up, and then, would you believe it, it puffed up, ready for the next bake. That's a myth. I have never encountered a dead starter. It's a myth. If, please prove me wrong, please. A lot of sourdough recipes you'll see have got a super wet dough and that's for many reasons. One reason is that in a more liquid environment your natural yeasts have got a better home to then flourish. Another reason is that many opinion the wetter the dough the better the bread will be. It will hold the moisture nicely. It will produce a moister loaf and a loaf that will probably have a bit of a long shelf life and another reason is that if you are looking for big holes, if you want a big open crumbed loaf, the wetter the dough the easier it is to achieve that in combination with a long slow proof and tactical stretch and folds. But it doesn't have to be this way, it doesn't have to be wet. I work my sourdough normally on a 72% hydration if that's your cup of tea, if that's how you process stuff in your mind. But in my classes we use exactly the same starter and we make a variety of doughs. One in particular for the rolls that look like this is a drier, tighter, Dough, and we go to the extreme and do a more wetter one for a ciabatta style bread and we do a middle of the road one for our loaves. It's a myth that it has to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. The most important thing is that you can manage it and you can deal with it and you can make lovely sourdough bread with a lower hydration making a dough a little bit tighter and that's easier for you to handle. Let's move on to the next myth. I don't like sourdough because it's got that twang. Sourdough is far too acidic for my taste. Ooh. I hear stuff like this all the time. Don't discount sourdough because it tastes acidic or like vinegar. Consider your source. Consider where you got that bread from, where you ate it from. Consider whether they are actually making sourdough bread. Are they making sourdough bread in Tesco's? Bombshell, no. Is that sourdough loaf on the shelf in Asda for £1.50 actually sourdough? <laughs> no. This is a big topic and it will be a feature of another video in this series, but most of the time the sourdough ain't sourdough anyway. It may actually in fact be a yeasted loaf with a little bit of sourdough starter got from some online shop and actual vinegar for a sour flavour. Sourness in my head is not the aim of the game when I'm making a sourdough loaf because I don't really like it very much. There are a lot of loaves out there that are properly gross, that don't taste very nice. They've got a horrible vinegary in the back of your mouth aftertaste that seem to linger, which is completely pointless. And that's what they try to do because that's what people think sourdough is supposed to be. I have had conversations in the past with people from America who say that sourdough isn't sourdough unless it's sour. If you like that twang, that's absolutely fine. If you don't like that twang, your loaf doesn't have to taste that way. And mine doesn't because I don't like that twang. Are you getting this yet? Often a starter which is caught a little bit late when it is collapsing is used to make a loaf of bread and that's where you get some sourness from. Sometimes you'll use a little bit of that and then you'll extend the proving time and you'll get a little bit of sourness because it's a long fermentation. Sometimes you can take your sourdough up and let it drop a little bit and pop it into the fridge until tomorrow and make sourdough with it and that will develop more acidity. But if acidity is not your thing, uh, don't bother. Just make it nice and taste like bread without that sourdough in the back of your mouth. Some people love the twang and they wanna get it as sour as possible because they love it. Some people don't, but sourdough is not disgustingly sour all the time. Chances are you're eating it in a, some sort of 
chain restaurant that just gets some cheap sourdough that's not actually sourdough from somewhere it's just got a twang so you think hey there's sourdough here i must be doing good for my body you ain't or oh this restaurant is bang on trend with this sourdough toast and smashed avocado on top i've seen this before on instagram it must be legit it probably isn't that horrible aftertaste is probably put in there by some sort of acid on purpose so you feel like it's legit but it's not if you don't like sourdough like that make your own sourdough according to my recipe and it'll be yummy without that horrible twang unless you like the twang which is fine and finally sourdough should be this sourdough should be that it's not sourdough unless blah blah whatever the truth is it's not sourdough unless it's flour water and salt and that's it anything else is up to you there's no should oh it should really be done like this oh it should really be done like that do it however you want to do it you know i've got a issue with the word should or if with the word proper right we don't need to be told what it should be like that's the worst thing to say to anybody even if it's not bread related oh you should really do it this way actually because it's the proper way you know we don't adopt that principle in life let's not do it for somebody else's sourdough bread there is no should there is no your sourdough should be sour otherwise it's not sourdough there is no it should really be baked in a dutch oven otherwise it's not sourdough there is no should actually there is one should your sourdough should be practical because if it ain't practical you ain't gonna do it and that's why i build my recipe from the ground up to work in your home so that it is practical because if it's completely impractical and you do it once and it comes out okay you're not going to want to put in the practice you need in order to nail the craft in order to enjoy sourdough bread forever if it's completely impractical you just are not going to do it. Your recipe, your method should be practical and we deal with the principles here in order for you to figure out what is practical for you to tailor the process to make it practical for you. There is no should or should not apart from the fact that you should have a practical method and a practical process that you can continue to do over and over again till you finally crack it because that's all part of the fun let's not make it difficult for ourselves let's make it easy let's make it practical and let's not listen to anybody who says this should that or that should be like this it's totally unnecessary it's a complete myth and there it is you guys there you have this seven sourdough myths busted i feel like there's so many barriers in the way of us achieving our sourdough dreams creating a beautiful sourdough loaf for the first time and continuing to practice our craft uh, evolving the process for ourselves and getting better and better let's just remove some of those barriers for now i hope this video has helped you out i hope you've got some value out of it i'm going to leave the following links in underneath for you don't go away yet i'm going to leave the following links underneath i'm going to leave you the playlist the sourdough playlist which is a little compilation of my videos on here all about sourdough i'm going to leave the details of the real bread campaign in case you want to join that in case you want to see what's going on and support that you can and i'm also going to leave my sourdough recipe link you know it lives on my blog it's been there for ages it's my go-to sourdough loaf recipe that i use at home over and over again it's the same one we use in my course i'm going to leave that underneath for you in case you want it and that's it thanks so much for hanging out with me here every single week i'll be back next week with another the sourdough bread making tip to celebrate sourdough september see you then bye bye Thanks for watching this week's video. I'll be back here next week for another sourdough video to celebrate sourdough September. As always, this video was brought to you sponsored by Bake With Jack. If you need scrapers, cloths, aprons, bread making bits and bobs, head over to bakewithjack.co.uk forward slash shop. It ships to you all over the world. See you next week.